It's our Gage 101, the 2019 edition. My name is Jalan, and today we're going to talk about how classes work. Now, if you're coming over from games like World of Warcraft, Black Desert Online, Revelation Online, Blade and Soul, then you're used to a character design concept where at creation you pick a class, and that really is it. From that point forward, you are that class. So you make a mage a character creation, you're a mage forever. You make a gladiator, you're a gladiator forever. Now, if you're coming over from Final Fantasy, then you're more familiar with the idea that your character can become any class that it wants to at any time. And you're used to different classes having different XP levels. Arc Age kind of has a blend of both of those things. In the leveling chapter in a couple of weeks, I'm going to talk specifically about character level and I'm going to talk about skill tree levels. But for today, we just want to really talk about you only need one character and you get access to 165 different and unique classes. Now, I'm not going to say that every class is going to be great. I'm not going to say every class is viable. There are some classes that are going to do things better than others. I'm gonna jump into our gauge codex real quick and I'm gonna show you, yes, you can after initial character creation, you can choose to be defense, or aromancy, shadow play, and that's gonna make you a night blade. And I'm not saying that you can't make night blade work in some situations. But what I am saying is that there is probably a better way to go about getting most of what you want, which is gonna make you more viable. Now, the reason that I can comfortably say that is that XL Games used to let us pick any of eight different skill trees at character creation. Well, what they've done in recent years is they have dialed this down and they have made it so we must take Battle Rage, Sorcery, Archery, Vitalism, or Malediction at character creation. What I do is I reference these as the five main trees. Basically what they're saying is, hey, these are the ones that give you big damage, bonus damage. These are, what, these are the ones that are really gonna help you put out DPS, or in the case of vitalism, this is really, if you wanna be a healer, you have to have vitalism. Now, when we come into game with any established character, we can come to a skill manager, or we can come over to a uh, temple priestess at the Nui shrines and this is going to allow us to change our skill sets now what i want to show you right off the bat is that when i come to a skill manager on a high level character uh quartermaster is a uh ancestral six character been around for a while i need xp on my character level which is my ancestral level now it gets a little bit confusing and I'm gonna go into this more in the leveling chapter, but you start at level one and you go all the way to level 55. And then at level 55, you make a decision to awaken into the ancestral levels. And then you start at ancestral level one and you go all the way to level 34. Now, you also have skill tree XP levels. And what I'm gonna show you is, I come in here and I can swap out any of my level 55 skill trees. Remember, they stop at 55. And I can swap them in and out as much as I want. And I have, over the course of time, leveled up all of these skill trees except Malediction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Malediction in. And it's going to cost me a gold 10. Costs you 330 every time you change out a full class to class. So I'm going to put this in. It changes my class. I'm now a Dark Seer. And then when I bring up my skill trees, you'll see right here that I need 27,000 XP to level Malediction's skill tree level from 15 to 16, which is nothing in comparison to the bottom of the screen. You see that I need right about 1.6 million XP to go from Ancestral 6 to Ancestral 7. Now, to show you a different character that hasn't done any other leveling other than uh, base leveling straight out of the box, School Guide, one of my alts that I do for making Archage videos, is level 39. When I bring up my skill trees, you'll see that I'm 
level 39 in all three. So this character is a specter. When I come to the bottom, I need 163,800 XP to go to level 40. I come up here, I need 163,800 to go skill tree 39 to 40. Your first three trees, if you don't swap them out, will stay at the same XP pace as your main level. Now this doesn't mean right now, if I wanted to stop being a specter, if I wanted to suddenly go healer, I could certainly do that. I would not recommend doing that. I recommend staying in the same class all the way up to 55. Get up to level 55 character level, get your first three trees up to level 55 skill tree level, and then in the leveling chapter, I'm gonna talk about a couple of tricks you can do to shave some time off leveling those other trees. Now, like I said, you got five main skill trees, and then you have six support trees. If you wanna get into which ones are useful, what you can do is you can come in here to the skill combos. If you wanna learn all about the abilities that are out there, what the other skill trees have, you can do this in the skill combos window just as accurate as anything else you could do. So if I decided, you know what, what would go good with Malediction? So just to make it easy, let me put Malediction over here. Be like, nah, I don't think Vitalism and Oromancy is gonna work, but what about Shadow Play? And you know, what about Sorcery? Maybe I wanna start looking at things. I can also show, tr I can show combos. If I click on any one skill, the downward one is gonna be the one that I clicked on. It's gonna show me all the combos. We talked about this once before. I don't necessarily like this tool in game because it doesn't necessarily show you, for example, Stalker's Mark is gonna increase uh, received ranged and magic damage by plus 7%. So it's not really showing me that Stalker's Mark combos, because it doesn't combo with the actual combo bar at the bottom of the, uh, at the bottom of the skill, as you see on this one, when I cursor over, it's gonna bring up that combo section. So the skill combos in game doesn't really do that well. What I do wanna do is I wanna come over here and I wanna come into that same build. So I'm gonna change my skill set to Malediction. Uh, what, we, what did we say? We said Malediction, uh, Shadow Play Sorcery. So we'll come over here, we'll make this Shadow Play. I got Shadow Play over here. You know what I want to do? I want to make this sorcery first. I want to keep it the same as the other screen. So now the nice part is, is down here, this shows you all of the available combos. This is going to take you through all of the combos that are available for those skill trees. So there's 63 combos together. Highly recommend our gauge codex. I, I, I know some people don't want to use outside resources, but I highly do recommend Dark Age Codex lets you see it all. It also allows you to see the passives. And what I wanna do right now is for all of my, uh, for all of my returning players, you're gonna notice right here, it says 18 skill points. You guys are used to there being 28 skill points if you're a returning player. You're also uh, remembering that we used to have to buy passives. That has changed. Now, one flaw with Archage Codex that I do want to point out before anybody totally falls in love with it, makes a build and finds out it doesn't work. You'll notice that here, there's not the three, four, five requirements. Pop back in a game real quick. You will see that at the end of each row, three, four, and five, this is how many skill points you need to go into that tree to be able to buy this ability. So if I want to be able to take Resurgence, I buy Mirror's Light, Nope, can't take it. I take Holy Bolt. Nope, can't take it. I take Aaron Zeb's Boon, which is odd because it's in the third row down. Now I can take it, but I can't take Fervent Healing. I can't take Healing Circle. It is kind of a weird system that I want you to realize. This three, four, five means how many points do you have invested, not including passives. So back into my uh, Archage Codex real quick. We're gonna look at, you know, what necessarily would work between Malediction and Sorcery. I'm just picking these two at first. I'm gonna talk about a couple of synergies today. Well, obviously Magic Critical Damage, the seven point passive in Malediction is gonna go real nice with this 
magic critical rate plus 9% from sorcery. Now, I do want to point out that in sorcery, there is Aaron Zeb's infusion decreases the cast time of sorcery skills by 8%. So this does not affect the malediction skill tree. This one down here says magic critical rate. This one down here says magic critical damage, but it does not carry over for all of them. So this one is magic skill damage of malediction skills. A lot of people were getting that confused at first. Now, I'm not gonna go into too many builds today. I'm just gonna show you some synergies. And the reason why is the tooltips in game are still not correct as of 31 January, 2019. So I don't wanna really get into builds until they get that fixed. I did, okay, we covered Malediction and Sorcery. Uh, I have Shadow Play here. I'm gonna change this out for uh, Archery. And the reason why I'm gonna change this out for Archery and let me, uh, let me change this skill set and take it out altogether. You can see that there's 22 available combos between archery and shadow play. Uh, some of them are just internal, but some of them are are kind of big ones, like the uh, the stalker's mark with the fending arrow increases the knockback. The um, stalker's mark to blazing arrow to fending arrow uh, inflicts the bleed and then inflicts weakness. Uh, so really. If you're playing archery, unless you are way beyond the Archage 101 skill level, uh, you most likely want to take Shadow Play as well. Basically, Stalker's Mark combos really well with a lot of things, um, with a lot of your arrow shots. So that is that is a big one. You'll notice when you curse your over, um, when you curse your over, you'll see Fending Arrow works with it, and you'll see that um, you'll see that. Uh, Blazing Arrow does as well. Okay, switching gears out of archery, uh, I wanna talk about Battle Rage for a second. Again, Battle Rage and Shadow Play synergize very well together because the seven point passive in Battle Rage is gonna be melee crit rate. All of the melee abilities from Shadow Play are gonna get affected by that melee crit rate. What's not gonna affect is not gonna be that melee skill damage from Battle Rage skills. Weapon Mastery only affects the Battle Rage skills. Now, the reason why a lot of people uh, synergize Battle Rage with Shadow Play, and again, guys, I'm just giving you the big overview today, part B of this video series, when they do have the tooltips fixed, is I'm gonna get into some template builds that'll be good for starters. The reason why a lot of people like to take uh, Shadow Play with Battle Rage is obviously Free Runner. Uh, people like to take Stealth. Remember, I can't take Stealth at the moment because I'm not four points in. Um, Shadow Smite is a huge, uh, an absolute huge damage ability. Uh, and then the uh, Poison Weapons, which affects on all melee and ranged attacks. Um, and basically uh, the other the other couple of big ones. But people like, pe people in melee, they like to have stealth. They like to go for that combo. They like to go for the, um, they like to go for the Shadow Smite uh, build. Uh, in the past, used to have Shadow Step in Shadow Play. They took that out. It was a little bit too much mobility for one tree to have. Uh, Shadow Play, you're going to find, is going to be is pretty much the new staple uh, tree that synergizes with everything. Uh, believe it or not, I'm about to uh, I'm about to take out uh, Battle Rage and I'm going to put in Vitalism. And I know people are going to be like, "Well, how does Shadow Play uh, synergize with Vitalism?" Well, remember your support trees, you're going to take one main tree that we showed you on character creation, and then your other two trees are your support trees, and you're taking these for utility, synergy, and mobility. Well, mobility is going to come from uh, drop back and free runner. Well, you're also, when you're talking vitalism, you get a combo with antithesis, and here's your synergy. As long as you're under free runner, you don't have a cooldown on antithesis. You can't target yourself with it, but you can spam it. You also get a uh, drop back, and drop back synergizes on an ancestral, not on a normal, um, not on a normal one. And this is what throws people off. They see me do the drop back thing, and I throw four men's out with no cast time. Uh, you don't see it on the combo here, 
But if we pop back in the game real quick, we come to uh, Shadow Play, we come to Drop Back, we come to uh, Wave, and instead of this, when you read this, Drop Back uh, grants the Drop Back buff, eliminating the cast time for Flame Bolt, Antithesis again, and Sunder Earth. When you're under Drop Back Wave, it takes off the cast time for Concussive Arrow and Mend. So the interesting synergy between Shadow Play and Vitalism is that you can choose your drop back to let you cast three Antithesis back to back to back if you're under Free Runner and um, Drop Back. Or if you're under Occultism's Pain Harvest, and there you see the combo, you can actually throw three and even sometimes four Mends back to back to back and ironically i brought up occultism to talk doombringer and doombringer has that pain harvest that synergy that combo and it it meshes here now this is what i, what I was talking about with the drop uh the drop back thing i'm going to get into a lot of details with a lot of things because you'll notice that there is no combo that says drop back you really got to get into the ability and you got to see oh wait a minute what's this grants the drop back buff eliminating the cast time oh there's a lot of people that forget that this is still here for Flame Bolt, Antithesis, and Sunder Earth. Now, I know a lot of people are looking for just the, hey, Jay, give me the build. Give me, let me, let me go at it. I don't want, um, I don't want to have to think about it. I just simply want to uh, give me a build, give me a rotation. Let me roll my face across the keyboard. Uh, that's not really my thing. I am not going to give you a full 18 point build, even in the builds video. Uh, I will give you a build. I will throw some points on it. I will tell you why I threw those points on it. I will talk about maybe a couple of other things you want to add. And then I will say the other points are up to you. I know I know this makes a lot of people mad at me. They're like, Jay, I just want the cookie cutter. Uh, I don't I don't do cookie cutter. Um, I think that cookie cutter is the reason why we get so many bad players at so many bad classes and why so many classes get a bad name they're like oh you're you're running soothsayer well why well because a bunch of people saw a soothsayer video they didn't own it they just run the they run the meta they run the cookie cutter and they, they didn't invent it for themselves uh and so really even when i do give you the builds video i want you to invent it for yourself all right guys to close up today's show i want to talk about the triangle i want to talk about the gear class build triangle Back in early Arc Age, there were a lot of pretty much standard meta gearing like lanes. Healers wore cloth, mages wore cloth, DPS melee wore leather, archers wore leather, tanks wore plate, and they plugged their magic defense hole with either um, accessories, uh, costumes, cloaks, or they did like a 4-3 a, a split. Well, with the invention of Hiram gear, and I just linked a video on Hiram gear above. Um, it's not the 2019 version, but I did it so recently, it's 100% still accurate. There are a lot of things you can do with your build that really throw off the meta. Can you be a healer in plate now? Absolutely. Can you be an, uh, a mage in plate or leather? Absolutely. The only things that you have to remember are archers, on a four piece leather set, you do get your plus three meter range for all your bow attacks. So you do get kind of driven back to leather armor only because your bow range maintains your superiority. And remember healers, you must use a healing power right hand weapon or a two hander. Mages, you must use a magic attack right hand weapon or two hander. Beyond that, as long as you are thinking about your build, you're thinking about your gear, and you're thinking about your class, there are a lot of things that you can do that absolutely shatter previous metas, and you literally come up as a, what's going on? Uh, big one that I want to, I just want to point out, and then we will get into this when we talk more uh when we talk more builds in the next video, never forget that somebody who is running plate gear, they will have a huge magic defense hole. But if they have Oromancy and they're able to pop conversion shield, 
they instantly will negate your big damage for five seconds. It's been the big, this big kind of discussion point lately since I came back. Everyone's like, it sucks. There's all these melee running around and uh, only mages can take them out. And we don't have a lot of mages. And I said, well, slow down, guys. Yeah, you have a lot of melee running around and a mage won't even necessarily be able to take them out because they pop conversion shield. There's a lot of things you can do. So we have really added that rock, paper, scissors for class, which classes beat which. We've also added that six-sided die throw now into our balance. You might have been able to beat that class previously, but it, you may not be able to wear, beat the class given the gear that it's wearing. Now, I know a lot of this is like, Jay, you're leaving me. You did a video and I don't have any answers. I have a lot more questions. That's exactly the point of this video. I wanted to expose a lot of things. And then after talking about that lot of things, uh, we're going to get into more nitty gritty with part B of this video. We're going to get into it more when we talk about gear. And we're constantly going to be adding knowledge to what we understand about Arcage. Uh, with that in mind, I do want to give a shout out to one of my YouTube viewers named Orsel. He watched the couple of first couple of episodes of Archage 101, the 2019 edition. He went to the website. He read it all and he said, hey, do you have a Archage 101 for new players? Because I don't understand what you're talking about. I talked about this on my stream last night. I said, wait, what are you talking about? So what I did was I popped over to my my webpage and I looked at it and I said, you know what? I really do see this guy's point. Uh, and then while I was there, I was like, you know what? I'm really not happy with the way the webpage looks anyway. So as you can see, I have redone the basics uh, page and I'm going through and I'm making sure to get into points like he talked about. And first and foremost, I pulled out the key terms in this section. What he said is you're using terms that I don't understand and it, I'm losing the context. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right in that. And then in another part, I talked about, um, well, yes, there are a number of daily things you can do. Crimson Rift, Grimgas Rift, you know, Miss Mero Abyssal that you can complete with your faction. He said, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand what these events are. So because of that, what I've now gone back to do for a little bit is I reworded that and I said, there are a number of events that you can do every day, such as blah, blah, blah. These events are detailed in the daily things to do section. Uh, now, yes, I mean, it's gonna suck having a bounce around. There's absolutely nothing I can do about that. It's There's just so much here that stuff is gonna be everywhere. But I do wanna say thank you to that because if this, can be improved for new players. That's absolutely what I want to do. So big thank, big shout out to Orsol. I am working on that. So you guys will see the web page is going to be getting updated. This should not impact my ability to produce videos. I am going to just dial down, get into um, get into this right away, and then I will be putting this stuff out um, along the same timeline. I'm just going to have to work a little bit harder every day. And that is it, guys. That is the show for today. I want to give a big shout out to my sponsors. Um, they are responsible for the gift card giveaway that you'll find down below. If you guys want to talk more, you guys got more feedback uh, that you can give me. I'm Jalan hashtag 0001 on Discord. I run my own Discord. You'll find the link to that uh, down below as well. And beyond that, join me during Arcage 101 Live on stream on Twitch, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You uh, you can see the times on my schedule uh, at Twitch. That's it, guys. I'm going to put this in a post-production so I can get it out to you for the weekend. Take care. Hey, where are you going? You're not done yet. See these videos? This video's up here to watch. You got to go over here. Hit the chibi. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the webpage, and I'll see you guys on Twitch.